welcome to Fractures Now YouTube channel. Today we are going to learn about the other part of the parts of speech, that is words. Now let us know that what are the different kinds of words? Because it is uh, very common with uh, a few students that they come at a mistake and the use of words and a care is very essential. How to use the words? Now, let us know that. But what are the different kinds of words here? The different kinds of words are we have uh, action words and state words, and followed by the main words and auxiliary words and modals. That is a modal words we call it, and regular and irregular words and transitive and intransitive words. Now let us come to know that what is the difference between an action verb and a state verb. Before going ahead with that, let us come to understand what is a verb. A verb refers the action of a subject. I repeat, a verb refers to the action of a subject. It is an action word. Now, let us come to understand what is an action verb and what is a state verb. And of course, a state verb can also be called a stative verb, whereas an action verb is a dynamic verb. So, an action verb refers the physical action, the physical action of an object. That is what we call it an action verb, whereas a state verb refers a situation. In that way, let us come to know that. What an example that we could sit on that here. For example, an action word we take, say, jump, climb, sit, stand, talk. All these signify or refer an action word, whereas a state word refers a situation. For example, take the words like how, like, think, understand, know. This is a state word. For example, if I say, I have a mobile phone, or I have a mobile phone. But here, we should understand that we should not add ing to the state words. It is only that we could add ing to the physical action words that ing we could include. Here, I cannot say that I am having a mobile phone or I am having a bike. We should only say that I have a mobile phone or I have a bike or I have a big house. So in the same manner, I understand your problem. You cannot say that I am understanding your problem. I like sweets. Not that I say I am liking sweets. So we should take care that we should not add ing to the state verbs because it is a bit common that a few students may think that by considering a word a word we add we can add ing we should not do that unless we realize that it is a word that includes an action so this is how where we could differentiate between an action word and a state verb. So we should understand that we should not add. Let us set an example here. We should never add ing. So this is the difference. Now let us come to now the next part of it. That is the next one. That is the main verbs and the helping verbs. And the helping verbs are also called auxiliary verbs or supporting verbs. And we know what these words are. The words of the main verbs are like be, do, have. And we also know that how are they used as the main verbs. That the verb forms are of three kinds. One is present tense and past tense and past participle and a present participle. Here the main verb is at the root verb what we call it. A root verb, that is what the other form of calling it as 
verb one, v one we call it, and v one is so. For example, I say see, write, ring, speak, watch, observe, follow. These are what we call the main verbs, and in a sentence we can have a main verb as well as a, a helping verb. What is a helping verb? By the title itself, it's very clear that it helps a verb in a sentence. It helps a verb in a sentence, and even a sentence is formed without a helping verb. Now, when I say I teach English here in this sentence, I teach English. There is no helping verb. There is no supporting verb. It's only the main verb that is teach. If I say that I am teaching, I am teaching the verbs to you. I'm teaching verbs to you. So in this, there are two kinds of verbs. One is a main verb, and the other one is a helping verb. What is that helping? In the B form, there it is am, and the other one is teach. So it indicates that when is that happening? It indicates that what the tense of that structure is, with the support of the helping verb, we can understand that as well. So this is how where we can understand that we do have, whereas they are also called the helping verbs. They act as the helping verbs as well. So now let us come to know that what are modal. Modal is, is a, a, it is to speak about the mood of the speaker. It is a mood of a speaker that it is. It speaks about the attitude of a speaker, how it is to express. And there are different kinds of the modals like can, could, will, would, and we have shall, should, may, might. So this is how where we use them in the case of modal verbs. And for an example, I could set here, in case of the use of modals, we should have an understanding how each modal verb is used. For example, if I say, I could walk a kilometer in 15 minutes. This refers in two ways. That was what refers about the ability or the strength or the capacity that I have, that I had once. And at the same time, I can also say that I express the other side in a polite way. These are the two ways of the use of a modal verb. I repeat here, can, can express the capacity, the ability to do. For example, I can speak English fluently. This is what I present my ability to speak English in a fluent manner. This is the ability at present. At the same time, I would say that I could speak. I could speak English fluently. This is what it in two ways it is considered. One is to express that at present in a most polite way. And the other is to refer it was once that I could speak English fluently. So this is how where we could make the difference in the use of each modal verb. Now let us come to understand what are the different kinds of regular and irregular verbs. I should tell you here that these are also called as weak and strong verbs. Why are they considered weak verbs? A word is formed depending on a few letters and forms a word. Here it is regular all through with no difference we see in the formation of the regular words. It is very clear that here the words are formed as a root verb speaks with ask and by the time that it changes to the other form it is that it is added with ed and the other one is also formed with ed. So they are regular. You can see at three levels of that or at the four levels of it that is present tense, past tense 
past participle and present participle. At four levels, we can see that there are the word of three letters, that is A, S, K, ask, ask, ask. And it is all formed by adding ED, ED, and at the end it is ING. So this is how, where we call them regular verbs. They are regular in the way they form. And now to speak about how they are strong, which we otherwise call them irregular verbs. The irregular verbs are formed mostly basing on the vowel letters or vowel sounds as well. Now, for example, if I say the ring, rang, rung, we can observe here very clearly that there is a change in the, in the, in the sound of the word there with the vowel letters. There, it is the ring, a violent change it is in the past tense it is rang, and followed by the next one in past participle it is wrong. So this is how they are formed independently we can say that. They are independent by their sounds when, when pronounced. So they are called strong verbs or you can call them irregular verbs. So this is how the regular and irregular verbs are understood. So. Now, the most important part of these words again, going further, is the next part of it is transitive and intransitive verbs. It is very important because it is very much connected in understanding a topic called voice. So, before going ahead with that, we should understand what a transitive verb is and what an intransitive verb is. It is by the title, it's very clear. A transitive verb. What is a transitive verb? Where the verb takes an object. A verb takes an object. For example, if I say, John writes stories. John is a subject. In this sentence, it is very clear that John is a subject, whereas writes is a verb and object is stories. So here in this sentence, it is very clear that a verb takes an object. And so, this verb writes is called a transitive verb. And to make it more clear that we should understand, the action of the subject should be received or suffered or experienced by an object. When it is received or suffered or experienced, and that verb is called a transitive verb. Now, for example, if I say, here you can see, I, I said, he entered the room. Now, what is this? Here we should understand that whether this object is direct or indirect object. We should know that this verb does not take this object. This verb does not take this object. And so, entered is said to be an intransitive verb whereas the room is a direct object and here in the sentence it is very clear that he entered the room is an individual action where the verb object is not receiving is not experiencing or is not suffering the action of the subject and so, it is said to be that it is an intransitive verb. So, this is how where we could differentiate. For example, if I say, here I, I say that the birds fly. And it's very clear that there is no object at all. And so, the verb doesn't take any object. And it is very clear that it is an intransitive verb. Fly is an intransitive verb. So, the difference that we could make here is uh, uh, between a transitive and an intransitive verb is very clear that if it takes the verb, I mean, if the verb takes an object, only then it is called a transitive verb. And if it does not take, if it does not take an object, and one important thing is that if it is a direct object as well, it 
is also called an intransitive worm because it is not experiencing or suffering the action of the subject. So, this is how the verbs are. So, we, we will go for the next topic. Before that, if you have any doubts, please mention in the comments box there. And thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Freshers now and so that you can watch more videos and the next class. Thank you.